Hey, it's you. And I'm glad you're here. Otherwise it would be just me. We are setting out on a new adventure. We're heading down the road. We're heading northwest from where I live in mid-central California. And I am so glad to see that you've decided to come along. I have the metal detector, the gold gear, buckets, my eyeballs, my fingers, legs that can carry us there, and some camera gear. It's a good thing, right? We're blessed. So, as we start off, as we begin this fifth season of Quest for Details, it is one of my personal goals to, to clean out my closet. I got some advice. I've gotten lots of advice over the years, but as much as I try and keep it lightweight, I also want to keep it real. Because, hey, any, anywhere where you feel weak and you feel judged, you know, it is what it is. You are who you are. We live, we learn, and we try and do better. So, the reason why I'm traveling alone, that's what we'll deal with today. The rest of my family unit is actually traveling. They're doing their own thing, so happy for them. What I don't mention very often, I don't know if I ever have on the quest for details, is that my home situation is very complicated. Um, me and Danielle have been together for a long time. We raised two stepdaughters and Olive. Um, stepdaughters from the ages of four years old to six years old um, all the way to now of course and I did years and years and years of family stuff and traveling together and all that kind of thing and for the last uh, well four or five years it, and yes corresponding with the seasons of quest for details actually I have um, spent more time traveling alone or me and all have traveled together not very often anymore as a family unit, something, I won't lie to you, that's a big downer in my world. Absolutely no point in fingers in any direction, I never want to do that. Life is, is damn complicated. And, no, I'm not ditching my family. Um, I sit up late to the night, I, I do a lot of editing when I can, where I can. Uh, but the serious part was um, when I can, I spend my time with my daughter. Uh, the other two girls being living independently now on their own, doing their own things out in the world, and just trying to keep the peace at home and questing whenever possible to ensure quality of life, as I hope you all are too, as much as you can. And I think that's enough babbling. I've actually recorded this three or four times in life because it weighs on me. And I decide, no, they don't need to know about your personal stuff, but I'd rather have, you know, um, the type of scenario that leads to, like this, we're going out right now on like a three-day trip, and, uh, you know, they took even the dog. And uh, everybody peeled out, so I was like, this is a good time for us to hit the road. And so, you're invited with me. Driving by Kelly's house. Hi Kelly, hi Don. We're out of here. And I'll see you at the next spot. Perfect spot for rock down there. Random, huge geology above you, so there's lots of layers that have gone through. No fences, no no trespassing signs. Just a spot where the road meandered and nobody claimed it up yet. And there's a creek that runs through it. And so there's no point in building anything there. So those are the gray areas, those are the no access points, the 
bridge crossings and everything else where you can get down and check the minerals. So, what we have, we got bones. And who knows what might be in this creek bed. Guarantee huge amounts of sedimentary rocks because we are in the coastal ranges of California. So that's sediment from the bottom of the ocean that has slid inland. And then it has lots of volcanic stuff that comes up through it. Wow, that's heavy enough. I think that's an actual greenstone. And then running all through that, jades, serpentines, quartzes, all sorts of shades. I'm realizing I've got the book on, uh, I just got a book, the Autobahn Society book on rocks and minerals. And you know, I have like 20 other books I look through and every time you get a new book, you realize that there's a billion more options and you might not be right about everything. This looks like a layer of green shirt for sure. Oh, we got some minerals. Looks like just regular massive quartz gone to crystal a little bit. Some blue schisty looking stuff. Quartz, you can see it's pretty wiggly, so it's probably been heated and squished, which is the right zone for finding a jade, I hear. So yeah, that's what I'm seeing, just stepping down here, we got all the minerals in California, as usual. That's the route that we're going to be driving as I'm heading diagonally out to uh, Highway 101, which follows basically the watershed of the Russian River and then we'll cross over the summit and follow the Eel River watershed north, maybe. Just giving it a walk through so we know it's in this creek when we're driving by. Nice chunks of... Yeah, it still looks like a chert. But beautiful blues. So these are the types of ribbon chert, layer chert where when they look at it, it's actually still got some remnants of the, the microorganisms that died and dissolved and for, fell to the ocean floor and their silicate in their bodies forming this. Whereas they're realizing that other types of it might be uh, you know, more in the flint family are formed more through uh, the precipitation of silicates through the rock. So that's what I thought too, because the more nodule things, or more like precipitation, you know, minerals moving through the rock and then hitting pockets and filling it in. Whereas this type of stuff is like huge layers of sedimentary style. So, same stuff, two different ways of being formed. Where the river is cut into this bank here. Pretty massive. Now this... That... Looks to be way less chert like and a little jade like it's going from whites into pinks uh, it could be a breakage of chert though too it got broken and then heated and squished and consolidated lots of different shades here I definitely don't have all the answers for you, so I hope that you're checking out all the different channels because everybody knows a little bit and together we can figure it all out. Look at that. That is a, a type of lava, a type of igneous rock and the holes in it have filled in. Well, it's not really lava. It's, a, it's lava that didn't ever come to the surface is what I'm trying to say. And then the holes have filled in with the calcite or a silicate. It's hard to tell for me. Probably a calcite. And those are little, basically, little nodules in there. That's cool. I put that in the pocket and I think we'll slice it just to see. Just to see. Sometimes they're concentric. Some, looks like calcite vein, a big one running through 
Oh, some sort of green, maybe a green stone. Yep, he didn't squish, Tourney. He didn't squish his own for sure. Look at this nice piece of nice. Nice piece of nice. Oh, that's a good one. Look at how wiggly that is. This is a great example. So those lines were once straight layers and then way underground heat and pressure bent this rock into the shape that you see. That's awesome. That's big. It's a big piece. Ugh. Look at how fine the little layers are. And then just bent around. Yep, looking pretty soft. Just watching. If I've been commenting on your videos, and they're jade videos, I'm serious. I'm, I'm just trying to soak it up. I'm actually trying to sort it out. And you gotta understand, in my land, I am surrounded by green rocks. And there's a lot of jade here, but it's just a lot of, a lot of different options. And when you're talking, you know, I've had experts be like, oh, you can so tell the difference, but that's how I am with plants and stuff. And people look at me like, huh? So, you know, everybody has their strengths and I'm just getting to a point where I think I can tell the difference between the textures and feel and softness of a chert as opposed to a jade. And I got a big old hammer because I'm realizing that we need to beat through a lot of these rinds. And uh, because of the way it's formed, because it's like massive lenses is what I see. And, uh... And so a lot of the time I think it's sneaking by, but by not even being broken. It stays whole and doesn't reveal what's inside of itself. I see hound piles here. So somebody else has high graded through and then dumped them. Big old layers of church. See the green in the middle and then the burgundy on the outside. Ooh. And that's something that was hiding from everybody. Oh, or it's just massive and buried. And none of us have been prepared for that. Yeah, here's the good serpentine. This is the more fibrous variety. You can see how long the strands are in this. More of the type of creature that you could call a uh, this is the type of thing that they would you know grind up and make into an asbestos but even then only the dry dust particles we'll leave that one there though it's plenty pretty as is cancel a lot of the stone out this church it's beautiful but we can cancel it out in the jade category just because of how it's broken and uh, you know so you can tell it's coming out of a, a sediment layer as opposed to a metamorphosized nodule looking thing even if it's a boulder it's just a huge nodule There's another chunk of this super fibrous serpentine Some of this though is what turns into the green cat's eye, like tiger's eye. Because the quartz, I guess, the silicate totally replaces the original material. So I'm kind of keeping my eyes out for that, but I'm telling you. Woo! Look in there. And when you're like, man, you shouldn't even be touching stuff that might even be halfway dangerous, remember that 
all of your road crews have to push their tractors through this constantly, daily. All the people that work in your quarries, everybody. The people that work in these vineyards above here who have tilled through all this native rock. Everybody. So, we can hold it and look at it. That really starts to look like Tiger's Eye in there. Or the green hawk's eye version of this. Wow. Look how long those crystals are. I think we will. We'll just wrap it up super careful so it doesn't grind a bunch of dust into the truck. Spray these off and at the end of the video there'll be a little picture show of all of the pretty things that we found on this little walk here. And we'll move on to the next location. That is a cool fade. It's like a natural triplet. We're going from like a chert or a brown jasper into like a clear quartz. You can see there's really very little difference between all these materials. It's got this metallic look to it. And so it just reminds me of a slate that's gone metamorphosized into more of a crystalline thing. So I think that would be a schist. <gasps> yeah, I think we're gonna haul home a truck full of chert this time. Just been craving the green. Okay, I think uh, we're gonna get call it quits for this particular spot. Hi, people. Don't wanna get clipped by a hubcap in the head, so we're gonna call it good for now and move on to the next spot. Go get some of these wet, show you that. George! Oh, that's a cool one. It's got moss growing through the eyeball. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So this is how I roll on a trip, just to make sure that things don't get stacked up in the shop wrong. Or I don't get too far behind. This will be spring 2021. And then, George, there, real quick. Inside this bag, I just toss them all in there. That's what I got from there. And then the outside of this, I have an indelible marker, Mendo line. Mendo Lake Tributary because I don't know the name. This is the video I'm because I have that bag then it's easy to keep track of and then I bring this cardboard box, you can always stop behind stores and restaurants and grab more if you need it. I have a little bit of bubble wrap in case we need to separate stuff better. And yeah, then it's parceled up and uh ready to roll. Don't forget George. Okay, next spot.